Hey, welcome to the Gurge. Got a cool project here. If you've welded before, you've probably seen one of these. This is a Lincoln AC225 stick welder. It's been sitting in my other garage for well over 20 years unused. So I'm going to restore this. Uh, again, it's been sitting around for a while, neglected. It worked the last time it was plugged in. I'm going to refinish it, um, go through the innards, make sure the cord's good, and uh, I'm also going to convert it to DC. I'm going to put a bridge rectifier on it. I'll put a link to the bridge rectifier in the description. This is going to be a several part video. Um, this is just the start of it. I'll, I'll put it up on a bench and start taking it apart and get it cleaned up. So please subscribe to watch the rest of the videos. So let's talk about the plan for restoring this welder. I'm going to add a bridge rectifier. This will let me use DCEP and DCEM polarity. I'm going to install DINs connectors for AC and DC so that I can also weld with AC as well as DC. This will let me disconnect the cables for easy storage as well. I'm going to I'm going to obtain some bigger wheels and a footing for the front. This will help me move the welder around easier. And then I'm going to add a handle over the top of the welder. That will also help me move the welder. I'm going to refinish the welder and make it look nice. And I'm going to clean up the contacts on the inside and generally clean up the inside of the welder. I'm going to clean up the stinger holder and the ground clamp and paint those as well. All right, well, with the help of my son, I got this beast up here on the bench, and we're going to attack it with the screwdrivers, try to take all the screws out, take the shell apart, and see what's going on inside. I think it's good to go. Like I said last time, uh, it, it worked, so I'm not worried about it, it running. I just want to get it cleaned up and restored and looking nice. So I'm going to speed up the video while I go over, uh, <laughs> attack it with screwdrivers and my... Uh, uh, screw screw gun and we'll try to get everything out of here so here we go But uh, I'll turn it around so you can look. Looks like there's a schematic or wiring diagram on the inside, which is nice. Alright, so. Alright, that may be a little too bright, but yeah, it just looks a little dirty. But for the most part, looks good. Got our. 20 wire going up in there. We're going to have to take this off. This is the fan. <clears throat> and those wires will be connected up here to the switch. So I'm going to take that out in just a second. And then we'll get a look at the, the switch in the front. But for the most part, everything looks good. So in here <clears throat> and now I can clean this up on its own without having to worry about it dangling around and the, the wire getting messed up 
take the power cord off, um, take this outside, blow all the dust out. The contacts actually don't look too bad. I'll use some contact cleaner and some sandpaper just to clean it up. And I'll clean up the inside here and then I'll start working on the chassis, stripping it down, getting it ready for paint. Now I'm pretty sure this is the stock original cord which would make this a 50 amp cord. Probably clean up the terminals a bit. I know a lot of people are replacing these with uh, the, their range cord. I've seen people use dryer cords which are 30 amp. Uh, the range should be 50 I believe. I'm just going to keep this cord. I think it's still good. I know it's still good. And uh, I'll just clean up the plug and put it back in when I'm ready. And um, having the shell off and, and in pieces will make it much easier to clean. Next time you see this, I'll have it stripped down. Maybe I'll, I'll take some video when I'm stripping it down and cleaning it off uh, with the wire brush and what have you and get it ready for paint. And <clears throat> I'm going to take the innards outside, blow out the dust, what have you, and then get this all cleaned up.